All right, sir. So if we just have you please introduce yourself, who you are. Absolutely. I'm uh, Second Lieutenant King, Kyle King. I'm from uh, Long Beach, California, born and raised there. I've uh, been in the Marine Corps for nine years now, commissioned last year as a uh, 0302 infantry officer. And now I'm here with uh, Echo Company, uh, 2nd Battalion, 5th Marine Regiment, as a platoon commander, leading 1st platoon. Could you just explain uh, what exactly the Marines did out here on Range 800 today? Sir? Yeah, so 800, a little bit about it. Um, platoon reinforced attack. So platoon reinforced is going to be uh, not only that rifle platoon, but you're going to have uh, mortars in support. So organic company mortars, 60 millimeter. They're going to be supporting. And then uh, today we also had uh, uh, CAT supporting. They're going to be a combined anti-armor uh, team. So they have, you know, heavy machine guns they're going to bring to the fight, 50 cals, 240s, and uh, just bring a lot more firepower that our company couldn't bring. Mm -hmm. um, how it really went down, we, uh, we started off, uh, usually we'll start off with suppression on the objective. So uh, we called up 60s, had them started uh, raining down 60 millimeter mortar support. From there, we pushed closer to the objective. Uh, echelon fires in, so we cease with mortars had the machine guns start up, and then that's gonna be our condition set. We pushed forward, cleared out three trench systems, uh, and then on the back side, used our uh, anti-armor assets to destroy any uh, enemy reinforcements. Awesome, sir. And does that get, how many chances do you guys, does 2.5 Echo uh, get to have all those assets combined together onto one range, sir? You know, it really changes. We did this range uh, probably about a month ago, and uh, we did it then with a mechanized. So we had uh, amphibious assault vehicles, uh, okay. A little bit easier, a little closer to the fight, they drop us off, so uh, we don't mind those. Um, but they're going to bring a lot of firepower, so we got to do that about a month back. Uh, it was a great time, great attack. This one modified a little bit, uh, just a rifle platoon. We've done this before as a company, so three platoons out there. Um, we did this as a platoon, so a uh, little more gets a pl the platoon commander, has a lot more opportunity. Uh, for you know initiative for pushing his squads out and letting uh, his squad leaders do a lot of the fight mm -hmm. um, So we've done this before and we're gonna get to do it again actually in another month I uh, don't know how that one's gonna go down. It's gonna be company or platoon, but um, this will be a third time We'll get to do it. So <laughs> wow, uh, it's a pretty good range um, So can you tell me sir? How how do the small unit leaders really run this range sir? Yeah, I mean the squad leaders are really the uh, the backbone um, I can't push around a whole squad. I can't control team leaders. Like, I just, you get too many supporting assets. Uh, so really the squad leaders is who I'm gonna rely on, especially my sergeants and uh, I have one corporal who's a uh, squad leader as well. Um, and they do a great job of you know, giving, them, giving them a task and them taking it. Uh, I don't micromanage it. I let them, hey, your task is gonna be clear that trench out and that's what I expect them to do and they do it. And they figure out a way. They don't ask for details or specifics. How do I do this, that? Uh, the how if it's done, I mean, I, I rely on them solely uh, to knock that out. So yeah, the, the squad leaders, the NCOs are definitely the backbone of making this all happen. And how does that make you feel as a platoon commander, sir, having those uh, excellent squad leaders to get that mission done? Uh, it's great. I mean, it makes my job so much more easier and, and just the confidence that not only I have, but the Marines below them get when they can see their squad leaders, uh, you know, give them good directions, give them good uh, instructions. Um, Adrax, things like that. Uh, you know, it just builds confidence. They know that they have a solid leader over them, and uh, it's just going to make the mission that much more successful, that much more effective. Definitely, sir. Um, so, what what are the Marines able to accomplish on Range 800 out here on such a such a huge range with so many possibilities? Um, what wouldn't they? What are they able to accomplish out here that they can't really uh, uh, perform on smaller ranges, sir? Yeah, uh, you know, the distance moving to the objective. Uh, got to knock that out a little bit, so it's a little bit of a gut check. Uh, but you know the Marines, they push through it. I mean, the water levels go down. Uh, they're tired. They're hot. They have uh, some of the guys have upwards of uh, you know 80 pounds of ammunition on their backs. So uh, that's a gut check, and we got to train to that. We're not always going to get dropped off like we did with uh, amphibious assault vehicles on the objective or close to it. We might have to make a movement. You know, a mm -hmm. click, two clicks, three. Uh, I don't know what it's going to be, but knowing that the Marines can do that, it's going to build that confidence. So just moving to the objective. Uh, action's on. Uh, back where we're at, we don't really have any uh, Mateo area. This is really the best range that has some sort of trench system mm -hmm. and uh, multiple trenches, actually. So it's a good opportunity for the Marines to get out there and, and do maybe something besides just targets on an objective or, um, you know, a mount down or, um, you know, 
only pits targets, only direct fire weapons. Mm -hmm. This is one of the few ranges on base where you can do mortars on the objective or pretty close to, and then uh, at the same time, Marines can maneuver on that area where mortars are firing. So uh, it just allows us to make it more realistic. A lot of things we gotta, uh, we have to notionally sometimes say, hey, mortars are firing, or notionally say, you know, cat is suppressing, but this range, you get to bring all that out and the Marines get to see the full effects of all these, fire, these weapons. And uh, myself as a platoon commander and the other supporting assets, uh, you know, we get the challenge of working together, uh, perfecting communications, and um, just bringing everything together for that, uh, that piece to uh, fall into place. So what do you think overall the Marines here took away from this uh, for the pre-deployment training, sir? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is, um, you know, just individual actions are the best thing. You know, the Marines, uh, you see them in there, they know how to uh, hold security as you're moving up. They know how to just, you know, get inside, clear the trench out, execute a uh, frag battle drill where they, you know, probably throw the hand grenade. Uh, they know how to clear the trench as uh, systematically, not just kind of randomly walking in there. They know how to, they run, one runs out of ammo, the other one has a magazine, he can throw to him. So just the communication pieces, the individual actions, uh, the Marines are always getting better at that. We started six months ago with, um, I want to say, probably 75% uh, of the platoon coming straight out of the School of Infantry. And in six months, I mean, we've come an incredible way. I and mean, these guys are uh, they're warriors. And um, so not only the individual actions, but just the gut check of having to accomplish this range, push back, and then knowing that they're going to have to uh, execute the range again tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, just that confidence. Once they walk away from this, they'll remember this. It wasn't a nice and cool, uh, breezy day. I mean, it was hot. They were tired. We were out of water. Uh, they'll remember, like, how far they were pushed to the limit. And when this happens again in, you know, a country that we're, we're uh, called up to support, uh, they'll know what they can accomplish. They know what their limits are, mm -hmm. and uh, they know when they can push past that that comfort zone. Definitely, sir. Obviously, there's so many so many new Marines in the company here, sir. What was that like um, having to train all those new Marines with a deployment so soon? Mm -hmm. You know, it was difficult. The first uh, two or three months, we had a lot of guys that got back from the uh, Afghanistan deployment. They were transitioning out, and um, it. It was a little tough, especially with a lot of guys getting out. Um, but they did well as the new Marines came in. They brought them up to speed. So uh, I give a lot of credit to the senior guys who uh, passed on knowledge. And then we just had to hit it hard. I mean, in the past six months, we've probably been in the, the field for about four months of it. So we've hit it really hard. Um, and just ranges like this, or small ranges, you know, practicing immediate action, practicing fire movement, practicing reloads, practicing 203 on a. Uh, um, known distance range. So very, very basic skills, and then at the same time throwing in their uh, advanced skills and just, you know, putting them in the grinder. And they performed, they, they really performed, uh, as you've seen. So it's just training, hitting it hard and hitting it often. Definitely. So where do you guys plan to go from here, sir? We <laughs> plan to uh, uh, leave in November, 31st meet, we'll fly over to Okinawa. And then from there, um, really wherever we're needed, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be, conducting operations probably I don't know the details but probably I can assume Korea uh, mountainous terrain like we have here um, Philippines also mountainous terrain a little more tree line a little more vegetation uh, and anything else we're called to go Japan Thailand um, Indonesia Malaysia wherever we're needed in that area of operations we'll support so the Marines uh, we can expect a lot of things like humanitarian I think that's always the standard humanitarian operations, civilian uh, evacuation, uh, some sort of security element, but we always train the Marines to combat uh, because in the end, like they can always default back to helping people and pass it on MREs, but mm -hmm. we can't reteach them when they're thrown into it. We can't reteach how to conduct ambushes, how to conduct uh, movement to contacts, how to conduct a, uh, a live fire platoon reinforced attack. Uh, we're, it's too late by the time we step. Mm -hmm. So we hit the stuff here hard, and then once we get out there, we can uh, you know, adjust to those uh, non-kinetic uh, missions we might receive. Definitely, sir. And how do, you, how do you think your Marines will perform after hitting it so hard for the past six months? I think they're going to do great. Um, you know, there's always room to improve. We're not there. Uh, we never will be. Uh, there's a level that, that we need to reach, and uh, we're still going for it. Like I said, a lot of the guys are young. Uh, team leaders are very young. Probably last year at this time, team leaders were graduating from high school. And uh, so 
they're learning it. You know, they're going to need the experience. They're going to need the mentorship and just more of this. Um, but uh, I think they're going to do great. You know, when the, mm-hmm. when it, the chips fall into place and uh, we get called up for whatever it's going to be, uh, the training here is going to kick in and the seriousness of the, uh, the mission is going to kick in as well. And I, I got no real concerns. Just have you introduce yourself, please, who you are, Sergeant? All right, I'm Sergeant Barnes, uh, Travis Barnes, with the 25 Echo 1st Platoon, squad leader of the 1st Squad. Awesome. So can we just have a spelling of that first and last name, please? Yeah, Travis, T-R-A-V-I-S, and then Barnes, B-A-R-N-E-S. And where are you from, Sergeant? Uh, Northern California, a small town called Quincy. Quincy? Yeah, okay. Sacramento. Sacramento? Yeah. All right, so uh, if you could just uh, say what 2-5 what, uh, Echo really did out here today out on Range 800. 2-5 right, Echo today, we uh, attacked, uh, we did two platoon attacks on a battalion objective, uh, a new objective, pretty much a, uh, there's three fighting positions, uh, trenches and machine guns, uh, an enemy squad, an enemy fire team, as well as a uh, anti-air uh, technical vehicle on that objective. And what we did was we uh, utilized combined arms, maneuvered up uh, into the trenches and then conducted trench warfare, as well as just, you know, individual actions, small unit tactics. And what uh, what were you guys able to accomplish out here on Range 800 on such a, such a big range that you can't uh, normally accomplish on other smaller ranges? The big thing is maneuver space, just uh, being able to get that standoff for supporting assets to uh, suppress for you the maximum amount of time to, uh, for, to allow you to cover you up to the uh, last covering seal position before you have to break out of cover and uh, attack. And then um, I would say just utilizing all the supporting assets. We had the CAT team out here, they were firing 240s, Mark 19s and 50 cals. We had mortars dropping 60 millimeters, uh, loom, smoke, and uh, HE. And then um, we had our own internal uh, support by fire with the uh, 240s. Mm-hmm. So how many chances do you have, or how often do you get to um, train on a range with all those aspects um, into one, like simultaneously going? Uh, we've been doing this one pretty often this year. Just it's been an unusual workout. We do this range a lot. It's probably like the third time we're coming out here one more time. Normally it's just, uh, you build up to that like level of starting from fire teams all the way up to squad, platoon, company, battalion level ops. You don't really see this type of range until you get to the platoon and uh, company level operations. And then uh, enhanced volume Viper or CACs, whatever they call it now. All right, so uh, so what is your role as a squad leader, like say out here today, Sergeant? All right, uh, my role as a squad leader is uh, my platoon commander gives me a task uh, that fits into the, the scheme maneuver that he was given from the company and uh, I, I accomplished that task. So today mine was set up a support by fire position to allow the rest of the platoon to conduct a breach and then attack two trenches and then break down and attack that third and final trench. So really uh, it's just planning on where my guys can go with the best positions for them, uh, how hard I can push them to get them there, and then just making sure I'm, I'm correct, uh, communicating with their other squads as well as the platoon commander. There you go. Um, so. What's that like being that squad leader? I mean, I saw you out there screaming at your Marines, telling them, directing them where to go, what to do. Um, what's that like being that guy to get your Marines uh, where they need to be and just direct, be that small unit leader on the, on the range out here today, sir? Uh, you're just really not thinking about yourself. You're just thinking like, hey, uh, what am I doing? What, what do my guys need to do? Because they're the ones that are ultimately making it happen. You're just putting them in a position to make that happen. You know, giving them that guidance. Hey, we need to go up here. You know, shift right, shift left, do whatever you gotta do, or you know, just it's, it's it's a little bit stressful, but in the end, like your brains are working harder than you. You just gotta think a little smarter than they do. Mm-hmm. So that's where you're making money. Is it a tough job? Uh, yeah. As long as you you get you mentored into it, mm-hmm. you don't just get thrown at it like you know out of the blue. Okay. Yeah. So how has this workup been so far? Uh, it's been we've been in the field a lot actually. Probably equivalent to our uh, last deployment, our Afghan workup. And you guys are deploying to the 31st coming Yeah, 31st, man. There you go. Um, let's see. So what, what do you guys have on your on your plate for the next few months before you leave, Sergeant? I think we got one more uh, uh, field op called the Battalion Readiness Exercise. We do like 36 hours of like coin operations in the immersion trainer, and then we come back out here again. And then after that, probably just little, real small things. No big field ops like this. Okay. So it's probably pretty much our second to last uh, live fire event. There you go. Um, what were some challenges you guys faced out here on Range 800? Today is the heat, primarily the heat, and then just the uh, the distance. I mean, it's probably two click, click and a half movement up to the objective itself, mm-hmm. and the objective is all uphill. So you're fighting through the heat, Marines getting dehydrated, uh, chow, and then just uh, some of the other obstacles I think were 
just communicating with each other and making sure everyone knows and goes in the right spot they're supposed to go. Does it get pretty chaotic with so many different things going on simultaneously? Absolutely, but it's pretty much controlled chaos. Like if you're there for like the briefs and the rehearsals and everything like that, uh, you kind of understand what's going on. But maybe like outside looking in, there's just people running, screaming everywhere. But there's there's a, a method to the madness.